Alrighty, so we have a new dev note out, and it actually came out last night on the JP side of things, but the Google Translate on it was absolutely horrid, so uh, I wanted to make sure that I waited for the global dev notes like I normally do before I covered it. Um, so this one's going to be very, like, talk heavy, like it's just me reading a page, so if you want to throw it on the background, whatever you want to do, feel free to just kind of just let it play, and, and, and you can just listen to it. Um, it. Obviously, if you're new to the channel or anything, feel free to subscribe. We're almost at 15k, which would be super sick if you wanted to stick around. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff happening lately. We just went over the JP uh, patch notes and everything with tears, so those are up on the channel already. But uh, yeah, let's hop into this thing. So I've done a lot of talking today, so I'm not sure how this is going to go, and my throat is probably going to hurt afterwards. So let's do this. Greetings, knights. It's PD Koo from the Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. The special Grand Cross 4th Anniversary Festival is coming to an end, and we would like to take this opportunity to thank you for celebrating the anniversary with us. Uh, we promise to continue delivering you great content and improved gaming experience in this dev note. We would like to share some upcoming game improvements and new game content currently in the works. So without further ado, let's dive in. It's, it's kind of funny that this is the greeting that they have for the, the global patch notes, because in the, the, in the JP patch notes, they have it translated to where he's talking about like not getting heat stroke and everything because it's getting really hot uh i assume in like J like the japan and korea area uh which is kind of funny that they just completely cut that out but uh, he seems a lot more sincere in the jp patch notes from what google translates telling me anyway demonic beast battle difficulty adjustments so this is a big one uh, they did talk about this a little bit in the patch notes if you haven't seen that already so if you want to get more context uh, they actually go over a little bit more of like the values I guess uh, in that but it's kind of hard to understand because of Google Translate and I don't really know the values to begin with so um, it's been it's already been five months since the fourth demonic beast uh, Nidhog has uh, been added to the game being a top end game content the Nidhog boss was designed to challenge players and encourage developing various strategies for defeating the beast. Naturally, as time progress or as time progresses, more heroes can or who can aid in the demonic beast battle are released. Players craft holy relics and clearing the uh, battle becomes gradually easier. It's still really hard. However, in this particular case, since the release of Nidhogg, there has not been enough reduction in difficulty. This has led to players, uh, or this has led players to struggle with getting the helpful holy relics and heroes, and consequently struggle with clearing the Nidhogg beast battle. So, honestly, with the new Deanne and Lost Vein relics, a lot of people are wanting to do Nidhogg more than ever, and I think they are realizing how like much, how difficult it still is compared to when it released. So, it's good that they're finally taking some action on this. Nidhogg's gauge mechanic bothersome skill pattern and skill duration will be adjusted to a lower difficulty so that players would have to rely less on rng luck and reduce player fatigue while maintaining the core battle strategy aspects um, so that's altogether pretty good in order to do that we plan on changing the following adjusting the gauge difficulty for floor one phase three and floor three phase one Especially on floor 3, the system where players have to wait and repeat until getting enough cards to upgrade skills to 3-star uh, while trying to beat uh, the boss mechanics will also be altered. Reliance on RNG luck will be reduced for this floor so that way players um, can t or could take Nidhog, Nidhogg's head on without uh, having to wait since phase one until they get the right cards. So basically what they're saying is in, in floor one, normally you just sit on your pierce cards until the very last phase. And if you don't pull enough pierce cards to get a gold card, you're not going to be able to reduce the gauge by enough, fast enough. So that way you have to end up stalling a whole bunch of turns, waiting for the card draw and everything, but you can't get in below a certain amount of HP. There's, there's just so many mechanics to it. And it's unfortunately really reliant on card draw. So they're going to try to alleviate that. Uh, in the actual patch notes, they said that they're going to make it to where it's not only pierce cards that's going to lower it by a, a big amount. So that should also help a lot. And then it says Nidhogg's debuff during the er, duration will be reduced on floor two. And they said in the patch notes that the infect that you get um, for two turns on phase two, floor two, is now going to be a red debuff. And it's only going to last for one turn. So you'll be able to cleanse it off and it's not going to last as long, which is great. Um, in addition, although a little overdue, we are currently examining the possibility of additional or additionally releasing a specialized hero who can be utilized in the Demonic Beast battle. 
more info regarding that will be revealed in a future dev note. So in the, the way it got translated from the JP patch notes, it almost seemed like they had just ne not even been bothering to work on a Nidhogg relic or a Nidhogg unit, which is very bizarre. Like, I don't know if they just assumed that Freya with her holy relic was going to be enough to make this thing easier. But uh, it has not been great so far with the way that things have been going. And um, they released this before the live stream and the patch notes went out. So everybody already knew that uh, uh, Tyr was not going to end up being the Nidhogg unit, which was really disappointing in, in some ways because people have just been struggling with this game mode for months now. They said it's five months since its release. Um, so kind of disappointed that he wasn't a demonic beast unit. Like I feel like he does work in every content, which is great, but the fact that he's more PVP focused or catered to PVP um, means that he might not be in the meta for too long, but we'll just kind of have to see how things kind of progress. He obviously has room to grow with the Holy Relic and everything, but I, I don't know. I, I really wanted a demonic beast unit. Hero Arena improvements. Obviously, a lot of people did not like Heroes Arena too much on the first season, which is completely understandable. I completely agree. We have received all your feedback regarding the newly released PvE content Hero Arena. While there was positive feedback, there was also feedback calling for improvements. Very much needed. Some of the positive reactions we got referred to the unique aspect of Heroes Arena being a PvE content focused on defeating defense teams rather than a single boss, and by doing so, allowing players to utilize various team compositions. I do think that that's kind of fun. It is kind of weird that it's basically just a reformatted way of recycling the content from Guild Wars. Like, I, it seems a little lazy in that way, but honestly, I can completely get past that as long as the game mode is kind of fun, which Unfortunately, the tiers for that game mode are just locked behind box CC, which is definitely super annoying, but if you're playing in the bracket that you can do well in, I think the content itself is pretty cool. Um, it's obviously not great, and it will become tedious and sort of grindy over time, and it will probably become less fun, of course, but as of right now, it's, it's okay. It's not too bad. I don't hate it completely, but it's obviously not great and could use some improvement. Um, however, some players were pointing to the fact that having to use the same knighthood competition strategy in the Heroes Arena contributes to player burnout. In addition, there were many players asking to adjust the league difficulty and make changes to the reward system. I think the reward system does need to be changed. It's ridiculous that you have a exchange shop where you're basically forced to go for LR coins or the legendary seals. Um, over anything else while there are other rewards in there that could be nice to get also. So it, I, I don't I don't really know what they're planning on doing, but that's really annoying. And it, it basically just caters to people who can clear the top content because um, <laughs> a buddy of mine can already beat all of the really high tier stuff. Like he can beat it on Challenger with the, the least amount of teams. And he's, he's already got Lost Vein Meliodas and in LR, and he's got like 67 um, legendary seals in reserve. So he's already over halfway towards the next LR, and a lot of people are just now getting enough coins to get their first LR. So the balance there is obviously not great. Um, the improvements we plan to bring to the Heroes Arena are as follows. Players will now be able to save their progress before continuing to the next defense team round whenever they choose to instead of, or choose to instead of automatically being teleported to the next round. So that's great. You can kind of just take it at your leisure. You don't have to just dedicate a ton of time to the game mode all at once. You can kind of split it up and come back to it whenever you have time for it. Uh, this will allow people to take, or yeah, players to take a break during the rounds. That's great. Um, improving issues regarding unexpected disconnection resulting in defeat. Uh, with these improvements, players will be able to resume battle from where they left off due to the network issue, just like other PVE content. So that's great. I know a couple of people have said that they just, you know, either their Wi-Fi dropped or they just got disconnected or the game crashed or whatever, and it completely ruined the run. So with it being PVE content, there really wasn't any reason for you to not have this in the first place. I assume the reason why they did it like PVP originally was so that way people wouldn't be able to abuse the the that tactic that people do where you can just close the app if you're going to, you know, mess up the the card order or something like that for like demonic beasts and stuff, but in general, this is a PvE content, it really shouldn't be taken that seriously. 
Um, future improvements for the weekly reset schedule and the reward system are currently under review and will be implemented gradually down the line. So obviously not too much info on what they're planning to do to the rewards, but seems like they are going to do something. Uh, being a newly released content, we are committed to continue improving pre-existing drawbacks of Heroes Arena and making it more enjoyable while reducing player fatigue. The mentioned improvements will be immediately implemented for the next season of Heroes Arena, so we encourage you to, uh, to enjoy the new season and give us feedback as well. This is really good. I wholeheartedly just expected them to release this new game mode, be like, this is exactly how we want it. If you can't beat it at the highest difficulty, screw you. <laughs> but uh, it looks like they're actually going to be doing well and trying to make it as enjoyable as possible. Because, I mean, honestly, LRs are going to be a huge part of the game. People are going to be really hyped to get LRs and everything like that. So if you're locking them behind this game mode that is incredibly tedious and, like, reliant on having, like, an in insanely stacked account and stuff, uh, it's just going to restrict it for a lot of players and make people not want to play. Um, so making it more accessible overall is obviously a very good thing. Ragnarok story update. Due to an unexpected issue, or due to unexpected issues involving content and resource development, what happened there? Uh, we have to sadly announce that the release of the new Ragnarok story chapter intended for this upcoming update will be delayed. So that sucks, but it is what it is. That I assume there was supposed to be a lot of free rewards and stuff like that with the with the chapter like they normally do, um, but unfortunately we're not going to have one this time around. Maybe they'll try to push out a new Ragnarok update sooner now that like once it gets done but who knows uh we know that the new story chapters are one of our most highly anticipated content especially our original story chapters and we would like to extend our sincerest apologies for not being able to deliver the ragnarok story chapters as early as we promised in the next ragnarok update we plan uh promise to do our best to deliver a rich story chapter that will satisfy all of your ragnarok story needs so okay um, with the Nidhogg Demonic Beast Battle difficulty adjustment, the New World Tree Tower region Memory of the Nether Exchange Shop will also be added to the 7.3 update, um, where players could exchange some well-needed Demonic Beast resources. So, they have posted about this in the patch notes. It's basically going to be, um, you can buy the stones for each of the Demonic Beasts, not the Twilight sources, or the, the like, not the sources in general, um, like the big reward that you get for farming um, like floor threes of the bosses or anything like that, but the stones that go with the uh, sources that you need to build the relics. You'll be able to buy two of those per boss per week and one LR coin per week, which is insanely stingy. That seems really low right now. Not a huge fan of how they're, they're rolling that out. Maybe they'll adjust it in the future, but I guess every little bit helps, so you can just kind of grab a little bit of a boost here and there, which I guess is nice, but... It just seems like they could have done a little bit more. Like, I'm normally not a stickler for that kind of stuff, but one LR coin a week and two stones a week for, you know, specific bosses, it's just, that's that's whack, man. Uh, new content under development. So this is a really big section a lot of people are going to be probably excited about. In this final section, we plan, or we would like to share with you some details regarding the content that we are currently working to bring to the game in the near future. As we mentioned in our previous dev notes, we are, consider, or we are constantly trying to bring in fresh and exciting new content. While there is still much more or, or much work to be done, we would like to tell you about the direction we are going with for both new PVE and PVP. They put PVE twice, but PVE and PVP content that is under development. Uh, first, we are preparing a new game mode for the Demonic Beast battle. So this is very interesting. That it got completely butchered in the in the translation on the Google or on the JP patch or dev notes. So I'm interested to see how this sort of gets worded. The first Demonic Beast Battle was released in late 2021, and since then, many players have developed diverse strategies for defeating each beast. Although the Nidhogg Beast Battle is still challenging to many, a significant number of players have been able to defeat the Demonic Beast Battles using many uh, specialized heroes that have been released through the years. The new Demonic Beast Battle game mode will be a seasonal game mode based on the current Demonic Beast Battles. In the new game mode, players will face off or, yeah, will face off different Demonic Beasts in the same battle for a new strategic experience. The new game mode will also include an exchange shop where players can get many sought after materials. So I think basically what they're saying is it's going to be a new style of PvE mode where you're going to be fighting the bird, the dogs, the deer, the, the Nidhogg, um, 
but just in like a new and interesting way. Um, I don't know, interested to see what the exchange shop kind of has, if it's actually worth the grind, because it's going to be a seasonal game mode. Is it, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to kind of see. If they end up making this like an extra source of LR coins, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see if they're just like having to swap constantly between Heroes Arena, Labyrinth, and whatever this new game mode is, like rotating on like a three month sort of schedule. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly how that's going to work out, but definitely interested to see new content, of course. So we'll see how that kind of pans out. Uh, next, let's talk about the new upcoming PVP content. We want to add more enjoyable PVP content other than the long lasting or long standing Visal Fight Festival ranked. Um, in order to do that, we are working on a new PvP game mode containing a special rule which will help make the new PvP mode more accessible to players of lower levels as well, while also encouraging usage of diverse team compositions. Lastly, we would like to sh uh, make sure that the new PvP content will not clash with the ranked com competition. So I think what they're saying is they're going to run it on times where there's not a top 100 season going. I can only assume this is just going to be a new mode where there's rules in place where you can't use certain characters. It would be honestly really nice to play a mode where like you can't use festival characters or like you only can use, you know, characters from year one or year two or something like that. So I can only imagine it's going to be a mode where char like certain characters are banned for like that you know particular season of when this game or like new mode is kind of running or whatever. Um, so I'm interested to see it. Obviously new and new variety in PvP would be great because PvP has been the exact same pretty much since it launched. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to that. We are extra careful about releasing the new content, mainly because we don't want to overwhelm our knights with more game content. In order to prevent that, we are carefully looking into different ways to introduce the new content while also ensuring an enjoyable gaming experience for everyone. We are committed to finalizing all of these uh, variables and keeping you updated on when you can expect to see this new content as soon as possible in a future dev note. As always, we would like to uh, or like to use this opportunity to thank you all for your constant love and support throughout the years. We plan on continuing to do our best uh, prov to provide you with an utmost gaming experience. Thank you. So, uh, I think overall it's pretty decent. I don't know exactly, obviously, when any of these things are going to be coming out. It seems like they're starting to get a little bit better about talking about future content that are that's still under development. So it's not going to be necessarily like something that we're going to see like next month per se. But um, they're definitely letting us get a little bit of insight on what they're working on, what they're planning to do in the future, um, which is great. The Ragnarok story not being in the chapter is kind of a bummer, to be honest, because, I mean, even if you're not interested in the story, it's just a lot of free materials and, like, just mats and stuff that you get for doing that, like gems and everything, free, like, summon tickets. Um, Heroes Arena improvements, definitely want to see how that pans out because I think they're much needed. Uh, Nidhogg getting an adjustment obviously is a pretty big one as well, because Nidhogg is really, really unfortunate at the moment. It's just really annoying. But um, I would say altogether a pretty good dev note. Um, very interested to see how some of this stuff sort of pans out, but that is pretty much it for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you made it all the way to the end, leave me a little Apple emoji or something like that in your comment. So I'm, I don't know. I just I like seeing uh, who actually listens to this whole thing. So uh, either way. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys later.